Hello, this is Bishop Coleman, and welcome to Region Voice Radio, the global media outreach of Voice of Joy Word Ministries. Voice of Joy is a family church, a training center, and a restoring body. We're called to be a total man ministry in the earth. Now, to the message. Blessings, this is Bishop Alan Coleman of Region Voice Radio. My God, we have gotten to the end of the week, and I mean to tell you, it's been a powerful, powerful time. God is a faithful God. Maybe you're like (laughs) others who have started the week and said, I don't know where in the world we're going to go with this. Praise God understanding what's so special about Christmas. You see, here is the secret. The secret is this message will work any time of the year. <laughs> because Not just on Christmas week, not just on the week before or the week after. It'll work any time because now that you and I understand what's so special about it, you can make Christmas happen any time you pray with someone to receive the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what we want to have happen, isn't it? Praise God. When we started off, we started talking about how that the entire world would focus on one event in a 24-hour cycle. That the whole world would, would make everything else secondary for that 24-hour period when we celebrated worldwide Christmas. And that's the power of God. That after 2,000 years, people are still as excited about the day, even though some have tried to create other reasons and give it other reasons. Hey, the, the bottom line is the same, and that is that Jesus is the reason for the season. As we began, we started talking about uh, what's so special about it. You see, once we understand it, then we begin to embrace the core foundation of, 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 of everything we believe. And there must be some, uh, some, some logic behind it. And, 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 and because, think about it, we even take our calendars and we divide our calendars from B.C. or before Christ uh, and A.D., I don't nominee, which is after Christ, amen. So notice what he's actually saying. <laughs> His presence is so central to everything we do. So it's right for us to take this week uh, and uh, talk about, amen, what's so special about it. We talked about, first of all, the relevance of Christmas, and that is that God came to earth, hallelujah. And then we talked about the reality of Christmas, that God came as a man, Oh, man. And but he came as a man and became a man. Glory to God. He went through the womb of a virgin. Glory be to God. And uh, that same God is like us. Because when Jesus was in that manger, he didn't come as a grown man. He came like us. He was born like us. He grew like us. He was tempted like us. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, of course, we talked about the reason for it is that Jesus came to die. He came to be the Savior of the world. And what does a Savior do? A Savior saves. Amen. So I want to, and just to encourage you to contact our offices and uh, to, 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 to ask for this information, to get this information, and we'd be glad, amen, to get this over to you. Hallelujah. And, oh, I tell you, uh, this you'll want in your library. And you'll want to get this information. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I tell you what, also, if you'd like uh, my outline, and my outline, it will allow you to, uh, it's like a, it's like the skeleton. And you'll have to take the information and you'll have to put some meat on it, certainly. But that's the whole great joy of studying. We study to show ourselves approved unto God workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Years ago when we, when we knew it was God to do this and be a part of this great radio station, we knew it was not because we were just trying to just be somewhere in front of a microphone. We knew it was an assignment. And so as people come 
uh, and become a part of the house of God, many of them say the same thing, that the word opened their eyes or the word caused them to see something that they uh, up to now had not seen. And man, I tell you what, just knowing alone that the entrance of God's words will produce light, that's enough, that's enough to become a lifelong student of the word of God. So you call our offices, praise God, we'll be glad to to get with you. 904-399-5777 is the office to uh, Voice of Joy. Or you you uh, contact this station and they'll be glad to connect you with Voice of Joy Word Ministries. Well, when we began, we were talking about this special, special day. And knowing all of the things we've looked at, we need to close it out strong. And our base scripture today is, of course, what it's been the whole week long, Philippians chapter 2. Verse number 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ooh, man, I still hear that echo and that reverb. Glory to God. (laughs) To the glory of God the Father. I want to spend time today as we look at this fourth thing that tells us what's so special about Christmas. I want to spend time around those verses 9 through 11. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him, amen, to the highest place, one translation says, and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What's so special about Christmas? Knowing the result of Christmas, and that is Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. You see, the cross is not the end of redemption. The cross is not even the beginning of redemption. The cross is is the portal that allows us to pass through and to know what the next thing is. You see, if we were just to stop at the cross, all we would receive is just that thing, that resource, that tool that allowed him to slip out from life through death and to redeem us uh, by going into hell and paying the penalty. But the cross is not the end. When he said it is finished, he was saying my part on this side is finished. I got another part somewhere else. Amen. He's alive. Hallelujah. That's what Resurrection Sunday is all about. There were, there were two results. The Bible says all through the scriptures that those who humble themselves will be lifted up. Those who lift themselves will be humbled. But Jesus is a clear example of that. Hallelujah. Because he humbled himself, God has done certain things with him. We have to really see this thing because he humbled himself. Well, what did he do? He made himself low. (laughs) Hallelujah. Because he humbled himself, God has highly exalted him. The first thing God did with him is he gave him the place of top honor in the universe. Man, I tell you, I love Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these days spoken by his son by whom he made heir of all things, who being the brightness of his glory, amen, and the express or precise image of his person. He he says that he promoted him. 
Now I tell you something because this 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 is this is really shocking. It's it's shocking when you begin to see it because he goes on. He says, um, being being made to, when he had by himself, verse number three says, purged our sins. That's what he did in that lower part. He sat down on the right hand of the majesty where on high. He went low and then got promoted on high. He humbled himself down low and got promoted where? On the right hand of the majesty on high. Bible said, verse number four, being made so much better than the angels. Watch this. He has obtained an inheritance, by inheritance rather, a more excellent name than even the angels. Praise God. Now notice this. Now, this is going to require, we got to really meditate on this. And he goes on, verse number five, for unto which of the angels did God say at any time, you are my son, this day have I begotten thee. Huh. And again, I will be to him a father and he will be to me a son. And again, when he brings in the first begotten into the world, he says, let all the angels angels of God worship him. Now, we better look at this thing because I tell you, once you see it, I think you're going to want to shout. Look at it. He says unto any of the angels, did he ever say you're my son? No, no. He says, did he ever say to any of the angels this day on a certain day, I birthed you? Okay. Now, when we look at that, the first thing we say is, well, 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 well now, wait a minute now. Jesus is God, God is Jesus. You said that already, Bishop. You told us that when we began the week. That's exactly right. But when Jesus became man and he went on the cross, not for us, but as us, Jesus went to hell. And when he went to hell, he paid the penalty for mankind. And the only way, because in hell, Jesus was being tormented by the enemy. Why? Because Jesus was suffering the penalty and the punishment for mankind. But there in hell, because he only had man's sin on him, he had only become man's sin. He never sinned. By never sinning, he had a legal right not to have to stay in hell. But how could he come out of hell? Romans chapter 8 says he was raised out of hell by the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. That being the case, when God raised him up out of hell, he came up from hell and he was born Again, oh my, he was born. Mankind is born again. Jesus was born. This day have I begotten you. When did God birth Jesus? God birthed him, you see. Jesus always was. In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. The word was God. Hallelujah. The part of Jesus that was born again was the part that was connected to man. Hallelujah. Jesus himself never had to be born again, but he was born because he was wearing the, the man that was on him. Oh, God, you have to meditate on this day. My God. See, so notice he can never say to the angels, you have this, you are my son. And this day, a specific day, have I begotten you. And then he says, I will be to you a father and you will be to me a son. Now, watch this. Oh, man. Oh, can we even go in this direction? And again, when he brings the first begotten, watch this. Who is the first begotten? Jesus. He's the first one that was born. Now, you and I, we may be the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, but he's the first begotten. Hallelujah. You see, John 3.16 says, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Jesus was the only begotten until he got to the cross. When he got to the cross, he identified himself with me. He substituted himself as me. So he was no longer just the only begotten. Then he became, hallelujah, he died as me. And when God raised him up from hell, he became then the 
first begotten. Glory to God. See, and because mankind had been born into sin, mankind had to be born again. Oh, my, 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 my. I pray you're going to get this. I pray you're going to just really meditate this thing. Now, watch this. When he brings in the first begotten, verse 6 says, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he said, he, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. But watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse number 8. Oh, boy, let me hold on. I got about to put my seatbelt on. But unto his son, this is what he said. Thy throne, O God, is forever. Wait, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God said to his son, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. God, look at what he did. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past until the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Well, what do heirs get? You. What do heirs have? You. What do heirs inherit? You. What do heirs enjoy? You. What was this heir receiving God? Huh? Are you serious? He received God, but what did he become? God. <laughs> oh, Lord. In so what happens is now that Jesus was became me going into hell, now at the right hand of the Father, he becomes me at the right hand of the Father. Now I represent him in the earth. He represents me in the heavens. Glory to God. And as far as God is concerned, here's what he said. At the right hand of the, of the throne of majesty, thy throne, O oh God. Jesus got the promotion after going as low as hell and coming up as high as the right hand of the Father. Wow. What are you saying? I'm saying Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. He humbled himself to the point where he allowed himself to become me. And the sin that was on me, he took on himself. He became that sin. When he came out of hell, Scripture says, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power is given unto me. All Greek word, exousia, all authority, all of the right to, the right to rule, the right to reign, the right to command, the right to demand, the right to enforce. Uh-oh, here's another one. The right to create. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he says, go ye therefore. At that moment, God, by the law of contact and transmission, Jesus passed over by the power of attorney. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore. So now whatever was on me, I hand it over to you. So that when he's in heaven, scripture says there was a period of time that Jesus and his disciples saw him after the resurrection and, <laughs> and they're looking at him. He says, hand on me. A spirit, they were they, they afraid, they thought it was a ghost. He said, a spirit has not flesh and bone as you see me have. Handle me, handle me. So in heaven, he kept the flesh on him. <laughs> Why would he do that? So that I would be a representative. I got a representative in heaven. First John 2 and 1 says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. In heaven, he represents me, but on the earth, I represent him. 
in heaven, he's got flesh on him. On the earth, I've got me in him. Oh, my goodness. In me, glory to God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. So you see, here on the earth, every morning I wake up, the grace of God, the glory of God, the spirit of God, and the word of God is on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. You say, oh, Bishop, wait, 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 wait. This kind of stuff. Well, listen, if you're a pastor, I'd love to hear from you. Invite us in. I'd love to walk. I'd like to walk you through this. Praise God. Amen. I'm not saying I know anything anymore or, or any less. I'm saying we can walk through this book and we can see exactly what belongs to us. We can see exactly what God says is supposed to be our heritage. Hallelujah. We have been so busy trying to make sense of what he did for us. You see, I tell you, when the smoke clears, Christmas won't just be a holiday anymore. It'll be a holy day. <laughs> Glory to God. Here we go. Amen. So by humbling himself, God did two things. Once again, he, he, he gave him this place. He highly exalted him. Hallelujah. He honored him above all else. He even said to him, thy, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. But then... The second thing that he did for him is he gave him a new name. Oh, boy. He gave him a new name. And he says what that name is. Well, let's look at it. He says uh, he gave him a name. That at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee should bow of things in the heavens, things in the earth and things under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord at the name Jesus. You see, the name Jesus uh, in the New Testament, it was, a very, it was a very common, familiar name. That's the reason why he was called Jesus of Nazareth, because uh, Jesus was a common name. But, um, <laughs> well, kind of like John, kind of like Jim, or Smith, or Davis, or anything like that today. It's the same thing. But... Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus means uh, salvation is of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Greek language says uh, Jehoshua or Yeshua, and they had to distinguish which one he was, Jesus of Nazareth. See, but according to Isaiah, we are prophetically told what, uh, what, uh, what else we should know about this Jesus <laughs> and this Jesus we're told and his name shall be called <laughs> wonderful counselor. Amen. The mighty God, the everlasting father and the prince of peace. What is the name he's been given as a result for growing, going to the cross? What is the name he's been given as a result for going into the bowels of hell. What is the name he's been given as a result of coming from hell being resurrected? The name he's been given is Lord. That's what he's saying. That's what God is saying. Wonderful counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, everlasting father, Lord. What does it mean when we say Jesus is Lord? Oh my goodness. Let's, 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 let's get it. When, he, when we say Jesus is Lord, we're saying number one, that we acknowledge that he really is God. Hallelujah. We acknowledge he's more than just a great man. We acknowledge he's more than just a prophet. We acknowledge he really is God. He is the Lord and he's my Lord. It's a test of my commitment to him. This is the reason why the scripture says we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba. Father, my father, my very own father. Hallelujah. Secondly, when we say Jesus is Lord, what does it really mean? It means that we believe he has everything under control. Hallelujah. You see, since Jesus is God and God has everything under control, then Jesus has everything under control. If we say that, that uh, uh, Jesus is Lord, then it's a statement of encouragement. It's a statement of comfort. It's a statement of confidence. 
understanding. Amen. He's got this. You ever notice? If uh, if you ever get kind of stressed out and and uh, you get around somebody that you really have respect or confidence in, and they come along, they pat you on the back, say, hey, 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 I got you, I got you. It's like like in you, like, <sighs> Amen. You don't feel tight any longer. You know, you're not stressing any longer. Your eyes not bucked out. In your head. <laughs> no, praise God. He's saying, I got you. It's okay. Praise God. Now watch this. Nothing escapes his care or concern. Psalms 138 and 8 says he perfects that which concerns us because he's Lord. See, when, when, when you say Jesus is Lord, you're saying, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but the person who holds tomorrow is my Lord, and he's in control. He's in control. I give this to him. I'm, I'm, I'm not calling the shots. It belongs to him. He is Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When I say Jesus is Lord, thirdly, I'm saying that I'm committing my whole life to him. I surrender. I'm saying that he's come to earth. He died for me. He rose again. And because he's done all of that, he's got the right to determine what's right in my life. And how to direct me. Amen. Proverbs says a man's ways, a man's ways uh, 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 causes his steps to come forth. But God directs the steps. Amen. A man's ways direct his heart, but God directs the steps. Amen. So you may have certain things in your heart, but God directs the steps on how to get to those things. Amen. He calls the shot because he's God. He calls the shot because he's Lord. He calls the shots. Praise God. I tell you, what powerful, powerful thing. Amen. You know, I, I, I tell you, as we begin to see that he is Lord, everything begins to shift. Hallelujah. That's, that's uh, uh, you know, in, Pro, in Proverbs uh, 16, that's what, that, that's what that verse is that I was misquoting just a moment ago. I want to get it right. A man's heart, Proverbs 16 and 9, a man's heart deviseth his way, plans the way, but the Lord directs his steps, praise God. You, you see, you can, you, you can have the plans, but God will show you the steps. You remember, the, you remember the, the, the scripture says, order my steps. Order my steps. Thank you, Jesus. When I say he's Lord, I'm saying, praise God, Father, I'm seeking to live according to your word. But isn't that what happens when we get saved anyway? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Huh. Oh, my goodness. I think I just stumbled upon something. I just stumbled upon why there are so many saints who are still in a renegade status. You got to go all the way back to what you confessed when you received Jesus. I confessed with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. I confessed he really is God. I confessed everything is under his control. I confess I commit myself fully to him. You can't be committing yourself fully to him and you still want to tell him how to save you. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. What in the world am I saying? I'm telling you that the issue is Jesus is Lord. I'm telling you that today that's the that's the challenge the kingdom needs to understand Jesus is Lord. I'm telling you no matter what it looks like right now, Jesus is Lord. When you can't cope anymore, Jesus is Lord. When you think you can't get out of this problem, Jesus is Lord. My God, what an entire week we've had full of the grace, full of the glory of God. What's so special about Jesus What's so special about Christmas? Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. This has been Bishop Allen Cohen. What a great time we've had. Hey, contact us. Love to hear from you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Sing, Isaac. Hang all the mistletoe. I'm going to get to know you better.